Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Uh, it's a pleasure to share about this topic, uh, which is close to my heart. I see many men who uh, suffer from uh, the enlarged prostate or BPH. So I always welcome an opportunity to, to share with the public about uh, the signs and symptoms of it and how uh, we can get over this problem together. So uh, as Jenny has said, I uh, practice with my father, to, uh, who's also a urologist at uh, Glen Eagles Medical Center. Uh, and uh, if you want to learn more about BPH or any other urological conditions, you can also find some information at my website at uh, www.tanurology.com.sg. So let's get straight to it. So what is the prostate? All right, so let me just orientate you. This is a picture of the male pelvis and your cut right down the middle. All right, and so this is the bladder. All right, and then urine goes through the urethra, which is a tube that goes through the middle of the prostate into the middle of the penis and then out, okay? So the urethra, which is the passage, is actually surrounded by the prostate. So the prostate uh, is only found in men and is uh, usually described as being walnut-sized. Of course, it can get bigger than that. Uh, and its main function is actually to produce the fluid that transports sperm uh, during ejaculation. It nourishes the sperm. And most of the volume of your ejaculate actually comes from your prostate. All right, the prostate grows to the normal size in uh, men, usually in my 20s, and then it starts to grow again in the mid-40s for most men when it starts giving trouble later on in life. So th the enlarged prostate is also called, uh, the medical term is benign prostatic hyperplasia, which essentially just means that it's a non-cancerous growth of the prostate, and which has grown larger than normal. And as you can see here, what happens is as the prostate grows, it actually squeezes the urethra, so it becomes narrower. And so you can imagine that it becomes more difficult for the urine to pass out. So as that happens, the bladder has to work harder to push this urine out. And because of that, it sometimes leads to the bladder becoming irritated and uh, leads to many of the urinary symptoms we'll talk about. Now, prostate size doesn't always correlate with how blocked uh, or how obstructed uh, the passage can be. There are people who have small prostates which are tight, which can also cause uh, blockage of urination and symptoms. So what are the symptoms of BPH or what we call lower urinary tract symptoms or LUTs? Okay, so the most common, one well, of the most common ones is what we call a weak urine stream. Okay, so men often describe it as uh, they have to stand closer to the urinal or not, if they, they, or not uh, they may actually end up uh, drop, uh, peeing onto their, their shoes. Uh, men often describe uh, going to the toilet, pulling down the zipper, and waiting to have the urination start, what we call hesitancy. And so what happens, they go down, they, they put down the zipper, and then nothing happens, and they're waiting and waiting, and maybe the guy next to them has come, peed, and gone, and they're still there waiting. And as I said, the blockage of the prostate uh, causes the bladder to work very hard, and sometimes it becomes very irritated, so it leads to what we call frequent urination. So normally, most people can hold their bladder maybe two or three hours, People with frequent urination sometimes as bad as every 15 to 20 minutes they need to go to the toilet. And you can imagine this very disruptive to their life. Men often describe what we call dribbling, which that means is that after they pass urine, they think they're done, they pull up their underwear and then suddenly some urine comes out and then that stains their underwear and causes a smell and an uncomfortable feeling. Often wives complain because the underwear is stained uh, and it can be an embarrassing problem for, for, for many men. The bladder, when it becomes too irritated, sometimes leads to a very sudden urge. This is not the usual urge where you can, uh, you know, do finish what you're doing and then go to the toilet. When men feel this sudden urge, they have to rush to the toilet immediately or they risk wetting themselves. Uh, in very bad cases, the bladder can be so damaged by the blockage that it leads to what we call overflow incontinence, where men are just become incontinent. All right. Well, the most frequent symptoms, the most bothersome symptoms of uh, BPH is actually, actually frequent urination during the night. So most men or most people can tolerate waking up once a night to, uh, to pee. But once it becomes more than once, two times, three times, it disrupts their sleep and it causes uh, men to uh, a, de a deterioration in their function and the quality of life. So I just like to find out from uh, our audience, how many of you wake up more than once a night to urinate? Okay, I'll give everyone a few seconds to answer this simple question. How many of you wake up more than once at night to urinate? Okay, uh, this is a simple question. There should be enough time. Can we have the answers, please? 
Wow. Okay. So almost as uh, fifty-eight percent of uh, our participants wake up more than once. So you can, as you can see, this is a very uh, common condition. All right. So I'm going to talk more about nocturia or waking up uh, at night to pee because it's a condition that uh, can affect your life. Uh, often people think about it as part of aging. So they dismiss it. They say, oh, I've grown older and therefore uh, this is normal to wake up more than once at night. But actually, it's not. It's just because it's more common as you age doesn't mean that it's normal. Okay. So the problem of uh, frequently waking up at night is that it disrupts your sleep. And because of the structure of sleep, it is leads to a poorer quality of life and your work and social performance, okay? Because this is a chronic condition. In addition to that, it can lead to long-term harm. People have been known to fall down at night because they, they, they have such poor sleep that they're frequently going to the toilet at night. They fall down, they fracture. It can lead to very tiredness. It can lead to increased risk of high blood pressure, depression. And one of the misconceptions is that it's always because of the prostate. Actually, there are many other conditions uh, that may cause waking up at night besides the prostate and including snoring issues uh, where there's decreased oxygen to the brain at night or uh, heart conditions. So often, uh, this is not a benign thing to have to wake up more often at night and it's very important to see your doctor about it so that we can find some of the serious condition, underlying conditions. So now we know the symptoms. Who can get BPH? So it's the most common prostate problem for men above 50. All right, up to 50% of men as will, will have BPH by the time they reach 60. And by the time they reach 80, almost all, all men will have this problem. Uh, in a local study in 2012, we actually found that 16% of local men aged more than 40 years old had moderate to severe lower urinary tract symptoms. Okay, but however, what was very uh, what was very sad was that we only found that only thirty percent of these men actually went to see their doctors, which means that seventy percent of men who had moderate to severe symptoms who should have seen a doctor decided to keep it to themselves and accept it as a normal part of their life and actually suffered unnecessarily. Risk factors for uh, BPH include obesity, uh, basically people who are uh, not heavy and a lack of exercise. Okay. And as to this newspaper was alluded to, a lot of people are leading more sedentary lives uh, because of the pandemic. And so we may expect that there may be more increase in the risk of PPH down the line. So this is a common uh, misconception or common concern is that PPH equals prostate cancer. So PPH being by definition is benign. So it is not prostate cancer. PPH does not, uh, it is not prostate cancer. It does not cause prostate cancer. However, the symptoms can be similar to those of prostate cancer because a very big prostate cancer can also squeeze and block the, the urine passage. BPH may coexist with prostate cancer, meaning that somebody who came for urine symptoms where initially we may suspect it was BPH after being seen by a doctor may be then found to have prostate cancer. A PSA level, which is a marker, a tumor marker for prostate cancer cannot distinguish between BPH and prostate cancer because both BPH and prostate cancer can cause high PSA levels. All right, so a high PSA uh, needs to be checked out to rule out prostate cancer. So BPH affects the quality of life. So most men who have moderate symptoms are unhappy and don't want to spend the rest of their lives with these symptoms. All right, more than half of men will say that it interferes with their normal life. Often I've heard men say that they are afraid to, to engage in their normal activities. They used to be a very avid golfer, but because he can't make it uh, through the game without having to rush to the toilet to stop playing golf. I've seen men who always need life looking for the next toilet, right? If, if they always have to plan their lives around the toilet. They don't dare to, to travel. They don't dare to take long bus rides. So it can really affect their quality of life. It can affect their professional lives. I've seen taxi drivers, lorry drivers, Etc. who have to quit their jobs because they're unable to drive long out, long, a long time without having to go look for a toilet. Half of men with uh, lower urinary tract symptoms will also have sexual problems. And this can all lead to uh, affect their quality of life with their spouses, with their family. You can imagine a man who has to wake up two, three times at night to wake up to, uh, to pee will, will disturb the sleep of his wife. I've seen men who have been forced to sleep separately from their wives because their condition is uh, disrupting their, their wife's sleep. 
So not only does his, his symptoms bothersome and it affect quality of life, untreated BPH can lead to serious complications. The bladder having to work for many years against a block cross, uh, blockage will then develop changes and damage. So you can see this Mickey Mouse here, this is not normal. A normal prostate is just like a round ball, but excess pressure will cause the pressure to uh, cause the inner lining of the, pros, uh, the bladder to poke out and then uh, lead to these areas which then collect urine, which stagnate and make it easier to get urine infections. You can get urine stone, uh, bladder stones, and the worst thing that happened, which is the worst fear of people of men is to suddenly have the inability to cast urine. So there's this very painful condition where they want to pee, but they can't pee. And then that leads them to have to rush to the emergency department where we put a tube inside to let the urine out. So it's one of the most painful conditions known to men, acute urinary retention. And uh, this is one of the most feared complications of uh, BPH. And then in very chronic conditions, the pressure inside the bladder goes up so high that it goes up to the kidney and blocks the kidney, causing uh, a, a swollen kidney like this, and then can even cause kidney failure. So what happens when you see a doctor? So of course, we will review your symptoms to see does it, does it uh, match somebody who may have PPH. We will administer a symptom questionnaire, so what we call IPSS where we then be able to tell whether a patient has mild, moderate, or severe uh, lower urinary tract symptoms. If you're interested to take the quiz to find out whether you have these symptoms uh, and whether it's mild, moderate, or severe, you can find it on my website here. Uh, you can see down here at tanurology.com.sg you get where you can go through the questionnaire and you get a score and it'll tell you whether you have mild, moderate, or severe symptoms. If you have moderate or severe symptoms, I do suggest that you seek uh, the care of a urologist. After you do a symptom score, we do a prostate exam. So here we put a finger into the rectum to feel the back of the prostate. And the reason we do that is because most prostate cancer actually lies at the back of the prostate. And if it's big enough, the doctor will be able to feel it with their finger. All right. Often men are worried about this part of the examination, but I will rest assured it's not painful. It's just uh, there's a big fear and stigma to it, but actually it's not painful at all. So after we feel for the prostate, we check whether there's any pros uh, prostate cancer. We will then go on to do uh, ultrasound. The ultrasound allows us to look inside the bladder to see whether there's any other causes of the urine symptoms, such as stones or tumors, whether the bladder is uh, abnormally uh, thickened from, uh, uh, from damage from a, a big prostate, and we can assess the size of the prostate. We then ask men to do a Euroflow. Basically, you just stand there and pee into the can canister, which then measures the speed. So you can see this is a normal urine flow of, uh, of uh, someone who does not have BPH. So you can see that the speed is very fast, it's 20 mils per second. And within less than 20 seconds, they finish passing urine. Somebody who has BPH may take as long as one minute or one and a half minutes to empty their bladder with a much slower speed. So besides the urine flow, we will then do some urine tests to check for any infections that may be uh, as a cause of the symptoms or the result of blockage as well as a blood, which may be a clue for other conditions besides uh, BPH. And of course, we'll do a PSA to check for uh, any, whether there's any risk of uh, prostate cancer. Okay, so in conclusion, BPH is a very common condition in middle-aged men uh, and above. It can cause bothersome symptoms and reduce the quality of life. Uh, when, if untreated, it can lead to serious complications. So while symptoms of BPH are common or more common as you get older, we should not accept it as a, a, a normal state, right? Just because something is more common doesn't make it normal, all right? It's still a disease and it's a disease that's easily treatable. There is no need to suffer needlessly from BPH. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for your regular dose of Asian health information.